slop a monobla corn on the cob. Check in with me and do your job. Lay on the bed and give me head. Don't have to ask, don't have to beg. Juicy is my name, sex is my game. Let's call the boys, let's run a train. Squeeze them my nuts, lick on my butt. The natural curly hair, please don't touch. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video and I wanted to let you know not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch where I play single player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. <laughs> and now, my friends, now, we will continue on with the stream. I'm going to be answering my uh, subscribers, my patrons, Patreon questions, Chat. If you happen to be a Revenite or Juicy Games subscriber, you have the ability to submit questions, which I will then answer on stream, on Class and a Glass cast, Chat. Not many this week, not many this week, so we'll probably be able to get through these relatively quickly, Chat. And uh, Bob, I will take some questions from the uh, chat as well. And if they are Spider-Man no, no, no Way Home related, again, no spoilers, no spoilers. I do ask of that. I do ask that. But let's go ahead and get into some questions, Shan. We got some questions from Vanny Vanisphere. Shan, thank you, Vanny, for being a Juicy Games subscriber. Good, certain absolute pleasure to have you here tonight as well. Chat, please do check out Vanisphere stream, streams. Give him some support. Follow him, subscribe to him, donate to him. Does the cooking streams. He does the, uh, the Final Fantasy XIV uh, MMO shenanigans. Shan, all sorts of things. We'll be playing It Takes Two uh, soon. As soon as I finish the Halo Infinite campaign, we'll be moving back to It Takes Two. Can't wait for that. That'll be some good times. But, chat, let's go ahead and get to Vanna's questions. He's got a lot of theme questions. He says, for this week's questions, let's finally take a break from Final Fantasy XIV and talk about more Final Fantasy XIV. He's kidding, chat. Just kidding. Let's talk about Half-Life, chat. Oh, a series that we don't often talk about very much on my channel. I've not played any of those games on stream. I've played the Half-Life games, but not those on stream. Movie question. The intro to Half-Life is one of the most iconic in all of gaming with our hero, Gordon Freeman, taking a train to work. While it may sound like a really slow or boring way to introduce the world of Half-Life, it was absolutely brilliant as things escalated from the mundane to the extraordinary. What is your favorite boring moment in film that is actually brilliant? You know, there's a, there's a couple of things. Um, I, I, I like in post-apocalyptic movies where they kind of show how people or an individual, maybe a single person, even society, how they're functioning, how their day-to-day -day life is. Like, when they're not fighting zombies or mutants or monstrous creatures or aliens, I like where they kind of show, like, this is how they... This is how they, they, they gather food. This is how they prepare meals. This is how they take care of the laundry. Like, how does it function? And we see, like, their little... You know, their, their, their home or their hovel or their little society. And it's like, oh, this is how this works. This is how this works. So, for example, like in I Am Legend, I really like how we have uh, Will Smith. We, we, you know, he has a relationship with that dog and how he goes out into the world. He gets his supplies, but he also goes to, like to the video store, you know, the, like, you know, uh, the, 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 to rent this back when we can still go to video stores and rent things. And he literally has it all organized and he takes out a DVD. He gets Shrek because he literally loves Shrek. Jet. He comes back, puts that on. He knows the movie by heart, but he has all these supplies. He makes his food. He does meal prep and stuff. And I love shit like that. Or in a quiet place chat, where we see how it's like in this world, the, you have these creatures who have very sensitive hearing. If you make a noise, they'll they'll come on over and they'll fucking beat the shit out of you. That's what they do, and they'll kill you. But now you have to like they have to live quietly. They have to prepare their meals in such a way where like they, they have these underground stoves to cook. They can't use any cutlery. They can't use utensils or plates because they make too much noise. So they put everything on these giant fucking leaves. I mean them that way. Um, they have, like, sand that they put on the ground so it softens their footsteps. Or they mark certain places in the house where if it makes creaking noise or, you know, for the soft spots in the floor where it doesn't make any creaking noises, they mark it with paint. And it's like shit like that to me is, like, super clever. I really, really like that. Um, I think that's, that's some just great world building. It really lays down just the environment and the setting that they're in where it's like, but it's like mundane, but it also could be dangerous, but this is just, this is how it is. So those always really appeal to me, whether if, like I love the movie or not. Like I think I Am Legend is, is a good movie. I think, you know, they make some mistakes in it. Like the first half of that movie is really strong, much stronger than the second half. So stuff like that, I, I'm always, um, 
very interested in. Click the card, Milkman. Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Ricky. Appreciate that. Class and a glass for your ass. You know it, Clifton. Welcome back to the stream, good sir. I hope you're having a very nice Saturday evening. Just doing my doing my my Q and A right now. It's been fun talking about like my favorite boring moment of film that's actually brilliant. So those kind of more moments, which is like the mundane, every like doing chores. It, it lays down like what the setting, what it's like to live in this world doing these ordinary tasks that we always do in our own live show. We all do laundry. We all do cooking. You know, um, I, I think that's cool. We all, you know, go out and we, and we get, and get things and bring them back home. And we see it in this way in these kind of worlds. Um, some other things, uh, it's kind of related to like another answer, but uh, look at the movie like The Breakfast Club. Most of that film takes place in a single room in the library. It's about these kids having detention. And they're having these like really ordinary conversations that, tip, that kids, teenagers of the 1980s, the late 1980s all had. You know, whether it's about fitting in or being awkward or talking about girls or dating or various, you know, issues at home, dealing with, you know, the, your parents or the pressures that are, are put upon you by your parents to do well in school or in some cases, you know, uh, child abuse. Like it deals with all these concepts, but it's mostly just through dialogue. They don't show you. There's not a flat. Like you don't have Judd Nelson talking about the abuse that he gets at home. And then we got a flashback to seeing all that. No, it's just him telling that. And it's just through that natural conversation within this room and these actors able to sell it. And John was kind of like one of John Hughes's greatest skills is that he really was able to convey the way teenagers felt during this time period. And it also, I mean, still relates now. Those films are kind of, yes, there's some dated references, of course, and maybe some of the fashions is dated, but they're all timeless. Those conversations are timeless. Um, and, they're, and they're very authentic and they're real. And so I really like that. And then we also move into when you talk about conversations in movies. I mean, one of the, the kings of the conversation, the, the, the king of the conversation chat, the escalating conversation, the escalating of tension in the conversation, I think is Quentin Tarantino, where we look at something like um, Pulp Fiction and uh, we see that like initial conversation between Jules and Vincent in the car where you have Vincent talking about getting McDonald's at uh you know um when he was living in in holland and things like that lay big mac and all that i, I love that uh, that's funny i mean it become that big and it's just like it's like we talk about you're literally going to start your movie with these characters talking about mcdonald's and how they say mcdonald's food in a foreign country it's a very unique way to start a film chef but again it's this iconic moment it's so good and it's that escalating uh, conversation. It goes from McDonald's, then it talks about a foot rub and how a motherfucker got thrown off a window because he rubbed this, this girl's feet. And then we get to the point where Samuel Jackson is threatening and quoting the Bible while shooting Brett in the face. All right, Brett, you think you're so fucking smart. And that's what happens, Chad. I like that. The escalating of that conversation starts off with the mundane, and then it gets much worse. We see this across all, a lot of Tarantino's films, a lot of his best ones. See, in, in, in Glorious Bastards, Chad. Where you have Christoph Waltz as Hans Landa come in and just doing like, well, I'm doing my routine check, but it escalates. Talking everything from, from, from milk, and he's like, you're keeping them in your floorboards, aren't you? All right? Now, I'll let you and your family live, and I'll make sure, matter of fact, I'll reward you, okay? But you got to point them out on the floor where they are. It's like the escalation of the conversation. That's great. Mundane, and then, oh, God, terror. Pure terror. Could you have a nice little shirt, Chris? Thank you. <laughs> I'm George Lucas. I'm feeling like Lucas today. Uh, Chris also just like Jed Nelson. I am, I am. Yeah, he wore flannel too. It's true. It's true. Thank you, Clifton. Thank you for the support. Pleasure to have you here. Oh, uh, some kind of, yeah, some kind of wonderful. That's another good one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Steph, good to see you. Oh, Terry, Terry, Terry. Yeah, we were just talking about like um, what we might consider like a boring moment of film. And I was talking about how we have these kind of like, Tarantino has these mundane conversations where he'll have two characters talking about cheeseburgers and the way we, they say cheeseburgers in a foreign country and how that escalates them to the next conversation where they're talking about whether a, a foot rub necessitates an individual to then throw out that guy out of fucking window because he touches girls feet like it kind of it's always increasing you know and I like that like it starts out very mundane very simple but then it gets even bigger as we go along I'm just gonna check a message real quick chat sorry just got something Got a little message right here. It's my parents. Uh, what we got? What we got? Hmm. Mama. My 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 mom wants me to get that Omnicron. Wants me to get that Omnicron. 
uh, shot right now. So I got to go ahead and do that. Uh, touching girls' feet. Yeah, that's how that's going to go. Some cheeseburgers to touching girls' feet to then after that, uh, you know, shooting, uh, you know, Eric Stoltz in the face. That's what inevitably happens. That's what inevitably happens. Uh, but yeah, yeah, to just to reiterate, chat, I love these kind of like in these big uh, post apocalyptic type of movies. We see how mundane their, their lives kind of are, where they have, um, you know, uh, you know, how they have to prepare food and laundry and do all, all you know, typical tasks. And then get me talking about high school life, something like in The Breakfast Club. And then again, you know, Tarantino. I think he's the master of the Monday conversation and then make it interesting. I didn't get my booster yet. No, I got my regular shots. I got my regular shots, my two COVIDs, but I got to get the other one soon. So there is that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. That's What about you guys? What are some like initially boring moments in a film, but you're like, oh, in hindsight, they're actually pretty clever and smart and cool. What are you guys thinking? What are you feeling, chat? Or a booster. I guess I should say Omnicron. It's like a booster, I should say. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. I got to get that one. Here's my When will you get the Omicron variant? <laughs> kind of, well, well, not the variant. It definitely wants me to get that shot. That's true. I actually liked all the mundane chatter. In, there you go. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's Tarantino. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan. You know, I haven't seen Death Proof in a very long time. I wasn't the biggest fan. Rosemary's Baby. That's a good one. That's a good one. Talking about all that baby making sounds mundane. I got that. Soldier Blue. Hey, oh, good to see you, Soldier Blue. Hope you're having a very nice evening. Welcome to the stream. Um, Invincible, the first conversation is very much a dad talking about his relationship with Seth. That's true. That's a good point. That's a great one. That's like, or it's kind of like the Monday conversation of a uh, of superpowers. It's like, all right, I'm gonna teach you how to fly. And for us, it's like, that's amazing. But for them, it's like, oh, come on. Yeah, you now you're learning how to fly. Isn't that great? Yeah. Um, like the Monday chatting in Jurassic Park. Because you like when they're in the car and when you have like um, uh, Jeff Goldman talking about chaos theory. That's fun. Yeah, another good one. I think Death Proof the Super I haven't, you know, I haven't watched Death Proof in a while. I might want to give that a shot someday. I, another shot, I should say. So I haven't seen it in, well, I guess when it came out, what, in 2006? 2006, 2007? It's been a while. Uh, Steph, I need the booster. My daughter was able to get her second shot. Take her to Spain next. He's like, nice. Very good. Very good stuff. Good to hear that. Very good to hear that. Yeah. Got to protect them kids. Like the end of Citizen Kane when I think about it. Um, Rhodes, Blue. Signs. Oh, yeah. Signs. Yep. That's going. Mm -hmm. I guess the old horror movies like The Haunting or The Innocents. My dad tried to introduce those to me as a kid. And I think now you have a greater appreciation for them now. That's awesome. That's really, really awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. No, good choices, Chad. Good choices. Um, moving on from that question, which I liked it. I, I, had to, I really had to think about that one too, Van. You kind of was like, you kind of stumped me for a while. The Conjuring, the whole uh, tracking show in the beginning, following the family around the house, where they're just, ah, talking about everyday stuff, really sold the family to me. And you also get a sense of the house too. All the rooms and the nooks and crannies and things. That was good. Very good. Because remember, the wood chase and uh, Texas uh, Chainsaw was boring when Leatherface Chainsaw roared and the fucking jump scares the hell out of me. Fair enough. Salem's Lot's another good one, Lisa. Yeah. You know, they're doing a new Salem's Lot. I saw that. I um, I uh, saw that. Uh, I think that's what's coming out next year. A cinematic adaptation. So I'm very excited to see that. Hope that's going to be good. I like my vampires. I like my vampires. Though we kind of already got a Salem's Lot recently. So I was like, all right, how are you going to make this even better than this kind of new iteration on Salem's Lot? We shall see. Um, but now should we move on to Vanny's TV question? Although he never says a word, Gordon Freeman is one of the greatest heroes in gaming. He isn't a super soldier or some prophesized words, prophesized hero, but rather a scientist who is just trying to do his best. Who is your favorite everyman, quote unquote, in TV and why? This is a cheat. Uh, because Ash Williams is originally in movies, but he did transition over to TV, Chad, and Ash is the Evil Dead. And I love Ash, you know, as an everyman because he's, he, you know, he's not, he's not bright. I mean, he's, he's actually an idiot, and he's kind of crass, and he's dated, <laughs> and he's very ignorant. But he does mean well, and he tries his best, at the very least. You know, even when he's finally pushed, he's like, okay, I, now I got to do him. He is kind of naturally lazy. But eventually, he is pushed to finally, like, okay, now you got to act. And there's just something charming about him. Um, of the fact that he's not your prototypical action hero by any means. He's very much a schlub. 
You know, especially when we see him like now he's in his 60s and things in that series. Still thinks he has it. Still thinks he's got even though he's got to wear a, uh, like, uh, um, oh, God, what is it? Um, oh, shit. What's that thing that they, they hold around you, you know, to suck in your gut and things like that? What's that called? Uh, not a garter belt. A girdle. Thank you. He has to wear like a girdle now. Uh, he's got like fake fucking teeth and everything. Um, you know, I, I, I love, I love that old version of Ash who is just too dumb and ignorant to realize that you're an old man. You don't have it anymore, dude. Not that you probably ever did. Oh, it's called a girdle. Okay, okay, okay. But a, a little girdle, girdle, that's what it is, girdle. And he's wearing Spanx. You got the Spanx, too? Oh, no, girdle, okay. I was like, girdle, is it girdle belt? No, it's girdle, you got that. So, yeah, definitely Ash Williams. But, you know, some more, so, like, okay, but that's kind of a cheat because he's both in films and, obviously, in a TV show. So I'm thinking like, okay, the other every man of TV, I, you know, it used to be Homer Simpson, I think for a while, certainly in the early days of the Simpsons chat, like, so let's talk about like the good, the good year, season two, like season nine, I'll even say season 10, but where he wasn't just an idiot because now that's what he is thoroughly. He's, he's an idiot, but back in the day, he's like, okay, he's not the brightest, but he does actively try to be the best father and husband possible. And he is trying to you know, do right by his wife, by Marge, but also try, you know, try to help his children even when he knows when he's struggling. And there was a wholesomeness to Homer. And that's changed over the years. I don't think we see that version of Homer anymore. Gentlemen, wait, hello, John Elfman. I hope you're having a very nice evening. Good to see you. Um, But, but, but yeah, back in the day, I, I felt like that's, you know, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is America's dad. He's like, he's not, he's not the, you know, he's not the brightest he, he, he does stumble. He does fail on occasion. But you can tell that he really does truly love his family and love his children and wants to do the best best for them, you know, despite his various flaws. He's a flawed person. Um, and I like that. You know, it's kind of been the successor, if you will, of, um, of Homer Reese, in recent years, I think, is Bob Belcher from Bob's Burgers. He's really kind of filled the void that Homer left for the last eh, 20 or so years, you want to say. Uh, or Hank Hill, Hank Hill's nothing, you know, Hank Hill's a good dad, Hank, Hank Hill's one of those other ones too, that's another good suggestion, a lot of, because I was thinking like, a live action everyman, you know, and I, I don't know, but for whatever reason, I just gravitated towards cartoon dads for every reason, and I'm sure there's other great, um, choices, other great picks, thank you, thank you, by the way, was that with the very kind host, Dippin' Dudes, thank you, the host, welcome to the stream, I hope you're having a very nice evening, Spreading the word of the Revenites and the Huckleberries. Hopefully they get more Revenites and Huckleberries. Appreciate that. Damn it, Bobby. The thing is, like, I always go back, like, um, uh, well, well, let me let me just kind of go over, like, with Bob Belcher. It's, I mean, he's trying to run his business, trying to write by his, his, his kids. Like, he does love his children, despite how fucked up they all are. And he really does truly love his wife, Linda. I, I love that. Like, Bobby. Like, I love that relationship that ha that they have. Um, and he seems very, very earnest. He just seems, he's exasperated. He's definitely beaten down by life uh, and tired. But I think that's also what makes him an everyman, too. Uh, I think that's uh, kind of like a, a necessary component to that. That's what makes him feel so regal and authentic. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think Bob has very much taken over the mantle of what, what, of what an everyman is. Everyman dad, if you will. And thank you. Uh, to Vanny for the host, Spread the Word of the Reverend Knights. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Share me on your channels. But, um, but in regards to, uh, uh, uh geez, Hank Hill. Hank Hill, he's, he's that too where, again, him and Bobby don't have a lot in common. Where Hank Hill, he's that kind of prototypical, you know, like, you know, uh, Texan, if you will. Uh, where Bobby, he has... Uh, a love for comedy and the arts and theater and films. And he makes references that Hank doesn't understand. But that does, despite all that, they do find something mutual to bond over. And you do know that Hank does love Bobby and tries his best to raise him. And, like, one of the things in the scene I point out, like, what's like I, people always ask me, what's a great season finale of a TV show? I have to answer this before, both in class and the glass cast and also my regular streams. And it's the finale. It's the finale of, of uh, King of the Hill where him and Bobby are bonding over something they both love, which is barbecue, which is grilling. And it's a really wholesome moment because then the whole neighborhood comes over and they all eat these steaks and things that they prepared. And, and Bobby is really appreciative of Hank and Hank is really proud of Bobby. It's like this really sweet moment. 
And uh, yeah, so I think yeah, Hank is is a, is a good everyman, and he, he even he even circumvents typical tropes. I think when you think of like, oh well, you know, Hank Hill is gonna be this this you know redneck racist conservative, and he's not in the in the show at all. You know, there are times where it's like you know people always say because they're doing a sequel series and say, oh, Hank's gonna be like one of those MAGA supporters, like a Trump supporter. I don't think he is. I don't think he will be. Because they even, uh, I think at one point in the show, like he was a big supporter of the of the former Democrat governor of Texas. I'm trying to remember her name, chat. Uh, cardboards ever have a continual fall on the grill? That sounds so evil. Oh no, that's like the worst thing ever. That's the last thing I would want. Cardboards, an absolute pleasure to have you. By the way, good. Thank you again for following. Hope you're enjoying the stream. That sounds horrible. That's the last thing we need. That's an act of evil when the tortilla falls in the grill. And that, at that point, it's destroyed. It's done. It's over. Ann Richards, that's it. The last time Blue ever graced uh, Texas. That's right. Ann Richards. Like, uh, she, uh, that, that Hank Hill was a huge supporter of her. And they talk about it on the show. And I like that. And Hank did not like George W. Bush in the show. The reason being because he didn't think he had a very strong handshake. He had a weak handshake. That's why he didn't support him. But I like that. And so it shows that Hank is, he seems simple. But he's actually a multifaceted character. There's a lot more to him. He's complicated. And I think Bob and Hank are two of those really great everyman dads. Whereas Homer used to be, but he's no longer that. He's more, he's more like Peter Griffin from Family Guy now, which is, which is sad. Who has always been a piece of shit. <laughs> he's never not been a piece of shit. Not really obnoxious, y'all. What, what do you mean obnoxious, y'all? What are you talking about? I mean, I could see Hank initially being a Trump supporter like in the very beginning, but then uh, running like hell once he starts to listen to Trump. Yeah. That might be that might be good because they're they're doing a sequel series, Chad, of Kenny the Hill, and I and and they're aging up the characters. It's gonna take place. So I think Kenny the Hill what ended in 2011. I want to say it was like maybe 2010, 2011. It was around that time, and so it's gonna be over a 10 year gap. So Bobby's gonna be in his 20s at this point. Hank and Peggy are gonna you know be I think what in their late 50s or maybe early 60s even. And uh, and they're going to deal with a lot of these things that we've been dealing with over the last 10 years. And one of those things you know they're going to touch on is, you know, the recent political climate. And I think it'll be very fun to see, like, which uh, of the of the characters are Trump supporters, you know. I think of all of them, Dale, I think Dale would be the the, <laughs> the Trump supporter. Like, Bill, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe Bill, but he, be, he might have killed himself by then. I think Bill might have died. <laughs> like, one of my favorite scenes, it's so fucking dark. My favorite scenes in the show, though, is when Bill goes up on his roof and is climbing up there. And it's like, they all live in ranch houses, so it's it's like a story. It's not even two stories. Hank's like, what are you doing up there, Bill? He's like, oh, I'm just up here trying to kill myself. He's like, all right, see you tomorrow, Bill. Just haven't done it. He hasn't done it yet. Uh, and Boomhauer, I don't think it is. I don't think he would be a, a supporter at all. I think Bill would be a Trump supporter. I think he would initially be one because he wants to be part of like something because that's what his, that's what he's always desired. Like, I want to be a part of something. I want to be accepted. And he would he would not he would think of it as like a club, you know, that tribalism where Dale would be like, no, I'm legitimately like a Trump supporter. But I don't think Boomhauer or Hank would be. It'll be interesting to see what they're going to do. August, pleasure to have you. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Oh Lord, Cotton Hill definitely. He would have been. He he would have been. That that man died. And he deserved to. He was a piece of shit. Fuck him. Mm-hmm. No doubt. But yeah, it was so mine, chap. Alex Bernal, YouTube editor extraordinary Alex Bernal. Hope you're having a very nice evening. Good sir. Good to see you. Whoa! Got some more support coming here. Thank you, Alex Bernal, for the host as well as for the word of the Revenites. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My favorite Deadpool. I think Dale would, but once he gets into the QAnon stuff, he would see it for the shaman. <laughs> I think that's when he would realize that's funny, because he's a big conspiracy theory guy. I think I figured that's why he would be into it, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I'm I'm just speculating at this point, chat. Remember when Dale was like, "I want Bobby to take the shot to kill him in the bell tower." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because Bobby's such a great fucking shot. That's right. Blackstone greetings and salutations to you, Blackstone. I hope you're having a very nice evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm good, man. No, I'm just doing class on glass cast, answering my very generous patrons' Patreon questions. It's been fun so far. Uh, we're, we are going to be playing some Among Us on mic, which should be fun. But, uh, but yeah, we're answering some questions from Vanny, Vanispheres, and some good ones. But, yeah, I have to reiterate, in terms of my favorite everyman in, in TV, Ash Williams, you know, he's, you know, Ash, you know, slicey dicey, uh, you know, uh, taking out all the dead-eyed chap, but he doesn't like, um, you know, 
like uh, a schlub, which I love about that. I love that about him. And then Homer and Bob Bel- or, you know, Homer initially for a long while, but now Bob Belcher and definitely Hank Hill. They're very much the everyman dads. They try their best. They're flawed, but they try their best, and they do love their families despite their respective flaws as well. And you're looking at 12.15 a.m. here, and someone insisted on vacuuming and drilling just now. That's crazy. That's fucking nuts. Oh, they do that. Oh, but there goes Mr. Grimm. If they gave a prize for being mean, the winner would be him. Edgy Berserker, thank you so much for gifting us some glow in the fro. That's a good name. Glow in the fro. Congratulations. Thank you, Edgy Berserker. Again, chat. Check out Edgy Berserker's channel. Give her some support. That's weird to start vacuuming. That's, that's too late. That's way too late. You know, like, the latest you could be vacuuming, I'm going to say, is 8 p.m. Like, okay, 8 to 9, all right. After that, nothing nothing after 9, in my opinion. Nothing after 9, chat. Was that Aunt May? A little bit of Aunt May crept in there, chat, I will say. I love the Aunt May, Aunt May voice. Everybody knows you love Mary Jane. Everybody. Yes. Nightmare Neighbors moved in. They're making noise or just screaming at you. Oh, really? Ooh, Jesus. Well, they seem to not care about their neighbors. Not Crane. I mean, maybe a little bit of Crane. Maybe a little bit of Crane's in there. A little bit. <laughs> and now, chat, we have a game question from Vanny. This might be a good one. I'm going to see what you guys think about this. I like this one. Half-Life 2 is considered to be one of the, if not the, greatest shooters of all time. In my opinion, it's one of the most important games of all time as it introduced physics-based mechanics to its mature storytelling and tight combat. One of the things that I think made it stand out with regards to gameplay is that it respected the player's intelligence. It didn't hold your hand and expected you to figure things out however you see fit. Valve has even said that they were fine if folks figured out how to break the game because the engine allowed for it. What other games can you think of that respected the gamer's intelligence in a similar way? You know, I, my mind went to kind of several genres of games. One of the first ones was uh, strategy games, so like Civilization. I like that in Civilization Chat where the whole premise of the game is it is a uh, uh, top-down, turn-based um, strategy game. Where you, you select a civilization, you know, it could be anything, Chad, you can have scenarios and things, but you can select a civilization, you can be ancient Greece, it can be Rome, it can be Egypt, uh, it can be Germany, uh, you know, the, the, you know, Great Britain, the Americas, whatever you want it to be, Chad, and you create your civilization over, over, over time, you cultivate it, you get to explore different avenues, what kind of civilization do you want, do you want one that is very militarized, do you want one that pursues, you know, uh, cultural um, you know, uh, you know, like these, 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 these huge cultural achievements, if you will. Do you want one that's focused on economy, build like the largest economy in the world? And you can win the game in all these various ways, chat, by either raging like, you know, a, a, a war across continents or economic superiority or you become a mecca for culture chat overall and i really like that about civilization the series like i played a lot of civilization back like civ 3 was a huge civ 3 and civ, civilization 4 for me were like my the, the like the times where i played that game the most i want to play like the newer ones i want to play them on stream but those are just so long and you can do different scenarios, too, where it's, like, a certain period in history and, like, there's elements added on top, like, you got to live through the Dark Ages or now you have to deal with the bubonic plague or you're, the Mongols are invading. How do you stop them? Do you make alliances? Do you, do, you, do you sacrifice territory? And it's, like, so many different ways in which you can achieve victory. I think that's really fun. And there's also online, uh, online uh, play as well of other players. I think it's fun. Divine Miss Klein. Good to see you, Divine Miss Klein. I hope you're having a very nice evening. Just doing class and a glass cast for Asimov Sass. Talking about um, games which they in which they respect the player's intelligence. And Civilization, I think, is another one. Other strategy game, I mean, StarCraft, which is all about resource management, which troops to handle which uh, scenarios and situations, what kind of enemy you're, you're, you're fighting, which I think is really cool. So definitely StarCraft. That's a big one. Uh, XCOM, which is another, that's much like Civilization, it's kind of like another turn-based um, uh, strategy game where not only do you have to, like you're, it's, you're in the midst of an alien invasion, you have this uh, uh, advanced organization on Earth, you have all these resources. How are you going to use these resources? You're going to create these kinds of troops, 
uh, to, to fight these aliens, but you know, you got to use the environment to your advantage. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice your troops, and that could be a huge detriment. Like, what are you going to research to improve your troops? going to go more science or, or uh, telekinetic abilities? Like, there's all sorts of things with that. And, like, I think that's really cool. And that, that game, next comes here is really hard. I want to play those someday for you guys. I want to name some of my, um, my soldiers after you. I think that'll be fun. Be real fun. So definitely, yeah, uh, XCOM is up there along with StarCraft. And then I started to think of like games where you kind of are able to create your own game. Or you you like the the you know these developers they give you the tools to do so so like you know Forge and Halo I think is one of those things was great create different game game modes and, and scenarios and things like perfect example of of um of a community using Forge check out Achievement Hunters like Halo videos not like their multiplayer stuff but how they create like maps and things and how they create like a video series where people could submit their their Halo Forge maps and do like um, these uh, like little competitions or these different modes and things. It was this long? I don't know if they do it anymore. But it was this long running series like back in the day when they had Halo Reach. We introduced Forge, and I thought that was really, really cool. On uh, Minecraft, I think is one of the most famous ones, chat, where it's like, okay, here's your open world. It's like you have the idea. They give you some tasks and what you can do and and things. But people have been able to. Again, look, look at what Achievement Hunter did in, 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 in Minecraft and how they create. You can create games within games within games within that world. And I think that's so much fun. Uh, and then we get to the more puzzle-based games. So, like Portal, for me. I love Portal 1. I love Portal 2. It's like already had these really challenging puzzles. And now you got to play certain portals and use uh, gravity to your advantage and momentum. you got to use math, chat. you got to use math in that game to figure it out and geometry and shit. In order to progress, while also telling a really fun story and having some great uh, voice acting to boot and some cool little mysteries, and so I think all and, and also very simulator chat. So listen, I'm not a big big fan of like you know S Kerbal Space Program or Microsoft you know Plane Simulator and stuff like that, or Flight Simulator. But hey, those games do teach you about space and space shuttle, and they also you know in, like in the case of Flight Simulator, they teach you about planes. I was like, that's kind of cool. I think that's really neat, and that could maybe, you know, get people inspired to, be like, actually pursue those uh, things in, in real life. Certainly when it comes to, you know, Flight Simulator and wanting to fly planes, get your pilot license. So, yeah, those are the kind of games I, I, I tend to think of when I'm like, okay, they want to challenge the player's intelligence, or they want to see what kind of scenarios they can come up with to, to not, I mean, not even break the game, but to make it easier for themselves. So, a lot of strategy games like Civilization, XCOM, StarCraft, um, kind of games within games like Minecraft or... Or, like, Halo's Forge. There's all other examples of that. And, you know, the Gary's Mod, I think, does that very well, too. Or, you know, uh, uh, you know, puzzle games like Portal or various simulators. Yes, me as a math teacher, if he dies, he dies. True. Cobb Angar is broken, so I'm playing Spider-Man. Well, I hope you're enjoying Spider-Man, Larry Miguel. Yes. Man, is there any other game that, like, it challenged your... You know, or not even challenged, but respected the gamer's intelligence or challenged you? And it's like, oh, wow, I gotta think about this. I gotta purchase this in a different way. Like problem solving. Hey, Berserker, I love breaking JRPGs and doing weird builds, uh, min maxing and whatnot. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Those are good ones. Oh, I love being able to break a game's economy. That is so much fun. I love doing that shit. Or finding little exploits and things in the world. It's like, oh, it's fun. I'm like, don't patch this out because I just found it. I love stuff like that. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's some, I, I, yeah, I just, because now at that point, it's like, no, don't, don't, don't fix, like, you know, get RPGs is very easy to break, break in RPGs uh, economy, so if you find, like, little loopholes and things, or you find, like, a guy, like, I sell this to this guy, I get, like, you know, ten times as much, I love finding that, and it's like, Dragon Age had one of those game-breaking bugs where you can become filthy rich within, like, the first three hours and have as much money to buy anything you wanted, I think now they just, they took it out of the game, which sucks, but I love to be able to break a game's company. That's fun. That shit, I love that shit. Persona 5, flu season, fight, death, instant level ups. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Sonic Rush and DS for me. That game was uh, tough, so I had to concentrate hard. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of games like that, which I think respect our intelligence and challenge it. And we approach problems in ways we ordinarily don't, don't think to do so. It's pretty fun. And now to move on to Vanny's content creator question. This is a good one. This is actually related to some of the stuff I was talking about. Uh, while Gordon Freeman is a silent protagonist, the world of Half-Life is told through its environment and side characters. That isn't the case for you as your content is based almost entirely on your voice. True and personality. True. Your green screen Twitch background works as it keeps the focus on you. Is this an, a, an intentional decision or was it more of a matter of convenience? Everything about changing it. Uh, to answer the first part of your question, I so 
I wanted a green screen because where I previously lived, Chad, like I didn't have a nice background because of how my apartment was structured and what was in it. Like my closet had these these uh, doors, which, you know, like sliding doors, and they were mirrors. And it's like if I had it that way, you would be able to see your yourselves. It just wouldn't have looked good at all. You would have seen my reflection, the back of my reflection, and that wouldn't be nice. So I needed a green screen for that. And um, – I, I, I like the I like that I have the green screen. You know, I mean, I could literally put anything behind it. I mean, not that it doesn't come with its issues and things, but I've enjoyed it uh, for the for the time being. Like, I eventually want to have I'm, – I've been thinking about this more and more. I, I kind of like how clean my aesthetic is for my streams. I don't like a lot of whole bunch of moving parts and things. Like, I have, you know, my, my – like, thank you, like, my weekly and monthly top people, my total subscriptions, my total followers right there. I have the chat. I have some uh, some polls. Or some, excuse me, some, some goals, some poll goals right there. Uh, and so I don't want, like, too much stuff. Like, eventually, I think it would be kind of fun to have, like, a screen where I could have, like, a nice background, like, have some fun stuff that you guys can see. Maybe I can have, like, a, like a bookcase and, and put stuff up there, and it looks kind of nice, and have, like, a stylized colored box around me. I have thought about that for a while, but for right now, I kind of want to stick with this. Uh, I, I am I am looking into maybe changing the aesthetic a bit going into the new year, but I just want to be able to um, find the right one for me. I don't want to just jump the gun too quickly, so I'm taking my time. Oh, and what about you guys? Let's get get some get the uh, uh, get some feedback. I was uh, wondering, how do you like my aesthetic for my streams? Does it look? Does you think it looks good? Do you think it could use some improvement? Um, you know, like be, be please, Chad, uh, be brutally honest. Um, how do you feel? I mean, I have this. I mean, you see this right here. You're gonna see the end, like end stream, but like uh, you're not gonna see it. No signal for right now. But then I have like all this up here, and I have the event list right there. When I play, and you have the game play, which usually is featured right there, me in the corner. But you know, what? Well, how do you guys feel about this? Dark story, terrible, atrocious. No, <laughs> step up. They can be honest. I would like a new background, says Alex Bernal. What kind of background would you like? Uh, Steph, I had to put a sheet up behind me for the trivia show. Def not showing up. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. I mean, like, behind me is my bed, but it's, you know, it's not really, it's not really, like, dirty or anything. It's not, like, just, it's just my bed behind there. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. Mm, <laughs> just kidding. I know. I know. I think it works just fine. I just don't have much of a head for aesthetics. Uh, Snake Man says I like it. Thanks, Snake Man. Says it looks good, but maybe something with personalized watermark instead of the Twitch logo. That's good. I think I like that. I like that. That's a good idea. I really like your uh, Q and A background. Thank you, Divine Miss Clay. Thank you. Could use some sprucing up a little. Okay, no, I like. Yeah, needs more comb over, Jamie Fox. I can do that. I need my gap. I need a gap tooth comb over. Mm -hmm. My comb over jury curl. Let me go. It does its job. <laughs> So, something easy on the eyes, like a new solid color. New solid color. Manosphere is the gaming setup is fine. I think instead of the Twitch symbol, maybe a logo. So you and and Cassie brought up a logo. Where's the bed? Oh, you don't see it's behind me right now. So behind my green. This is my green screen, so you kind of see that my bed. It's on my red shirt on the on the on the bed right there. That's pretty much how close it is. Um, tell me back at something that defines you. If it's not broken, do fix this. Ricky brighter car is all needed. Uh, yes. Yeah, logo would be amazing. Okay, I like that. No, I'm never, you know what, chat? That's actually a, some really good advice in a personalized logo. I mean, I have my class in a glass logo, so maybe I can do, like, maybe a modified version of that or something. But this is good. I'm going to actually make a note. So for these particular, like, the Q&As, one where I'm, like, right here, maybe a new background. But how about the boxes you see right here? So I have the purple boxes. I have weekly top, monthly top. I have the uh, subscriber count, total followers. I have the chat over here as well. Like, how do you like this? You know, background, I'm like, okay, I think that's, 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 that's some good feedback. Oxmall says, I like the boxes. I want to see the bed. <laughs> I mean, it's just a regular bed. <laughs> Uh, I like the boxes too, Sedge Berserk. My name should be over your heads at all times. <laughs> well, right now, the people are Tiberius Monk and Colonel Useless. They are in the top, weekly top and monthly top, chap. Um, I showed you the bed. You've got to go back in the stream. You might make the boxes maybe a little smaller. Okay. A little smaller. So maybe show off the background when I get a better background. No, not for bids for existing. <laughs> I 
fucking maybe. It is your birthdays. Oh, my lord. We'll see your little, little, uh, sus body running around in Among Us. Now, before I stab it, I'm gonna stab it. Oh, God. You only saw the quarter. But that was enough. That's enough for, for, for her to see. No more. No more. Yeah. So, okay. That's gonna be the make the box. I'll make a note of that, too. So, personalized logo, maybe improved boxes. And uh, what I'll probably end up doing, Chad, as we go into the new year, because I'll be making some aesthetic changes. Um, I'll be testing out some stuff and you know, like kind of give you guys like a preview. Like, how, how does this look? How are you guys feeling about this? Maybe we'll do that. But, uh, but no, I like that. So maybe a, a new background and making the box a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Don't collude against me. Think you're being open. No, I, no, I, I believe, Lisa, I, I want to make some changes. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely on the quest uh, for partner this year, chat, uh, going into 2022. And uh, anything that, that helps achieve that goal, I'm, I'm open. I'm open to anything. So, yeah, please. Please give me feedback, Chad. Never feel, never feel intimidated about giving me feedback or, or, or telling me that you think I'm doing something wrong. Like, that definitely really, really helps. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. I do appreciate that a lot. And now, moving on to uh, Vanny's next question. Since there is very little talk about in terms of the music in Half-Life, let's change this one up to voice acting question. I like voice acting. Half-Life's voice acting still holds up after all these years. Personally, I think that is due to the fact that you're interacting with other scientists and your guards versus the expected military soldier types. What is your favorite voice acting performance for a scientist nerd type character? And the answer to that, baby, is Morden Solis, chat, voiced in Mass Effect 2 by Michael Beatty. And they replaced him in Mass Effect 3, which I'm not sure why. Maybe it didn't work well with Bioware. I, I, I think there's probably a story about that somewhere out there. But also William Sailors, Sailors also does a great job. But Morden Solis said, I am the very model of a scientist Salarian. He is so good. I mean, Morden's one of my favorite characters in all of Mass Effect. One of my favorite squad mates in Mass Effect 2. You know, his, his, his moment in 3, is, that's one of the first big just oh, emotional moments for me. I got watery-eyed chat when that happened in Mass Victory. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I streamed that chat. It hit me. It hit me in the heart. So absolutely more than solace. I'm trying to think of like there's probably other like you also have um Otacon in uh Metal Gear Solid series. I actually met the voice actor, Chad Christopher Randolph. I interviewed him. One of my one of my favorite things I ever did for one of us.net. That was so much fun to sit down with that guy for like an hour and a half, like literally just like an hour and a half or something, and just talking about his career and and uh, not even just Metal Gear Solid, but all the other things that he did in his hobbies and things. That was that was super fun. So, yeah, I guess Otacon's definitely up there, chat. This is like my Japanese anime. I love that guy. But, yeah, for me personally, chat, I mean, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, as you know. So, more than Solus, definitely, you know, had to be me. Something else would have gotten it wrong. So, good. That actor also played Doc Ock. Yeah, so the, the original voice actor, I, I believe, for more than Solus, went on to voice Doc Ock. In the Spider-Man 2018 game, Dr. Otto Octavius. And again, he did an excellent job. So good, so good. I mean, I would put Doc Ock there. You know, nerdy scientist guy. Love that. I love that he was a mentor to Peter Parker in that game. That was a big surprise. They kept that secret. So going in that game, we saw like a lot of Mr. Negative, maybe a couple of the other villains. But Doc Ock was the big, or Doc Otto Octavius in general was like the big reveal. I was like, oh shit, I didn't know he was going to be in this. And I loved how they handled that. And especially where it made sense why he made the tentacles. It wasn't, you know, to, you know, have the power of the sun in the palm of his hands. Like, no, it was to, uh, like, basically it was a prosthesis. Where people that have, like, a muscle degenerative disease, which is what he had, his limbs and things would have become useless, wouldn't be able to move anything. And that would have helped him move around, like, the room or other people. And I thought that was great. Or paraplegics and things. People had lost arms. I thought, oh, was, that was very inspired. Yeah, I sound it was like it's, it's like a little deeper voice, but that's him. That's his voice. I was like, oh shit, that's that actor. Yeah, I played that. I played Mass Effect two so many times. Like I recognized it. I was like, yeah, yeah. What's this about? I don't know. I'm Xavier. I've always thought. I've always wondered about that. Um, I'm sure there is an explanation. I hope it's not like a bad one. Maybe it was just because it was a timing issue or projects. I'm not sure. You know, got something different. I thought I read about something, but I don't want to say like it was like it was because she was difficult to work with. I don't remember. Don't know. But yeah, yeah, uh, he did. He did a great job. So yeah, Morton Solis, Chad, absolutely. M both Michael Beatty and also William Sailors, who voiced in Mass Effect Three. That is to me the quintessential nerdy scientist. He wasn't even—I mean, nerd, I guess—but he was also a badass. He was a saboteur. 
expert in subterfuge. He was also a great power set. He had cryo and uh, what was it? Um, incinerate powers. Ah, oh, so useful on the battlefield. Freeze somebody and blow them up, or set them on fire and then blow them up, chat, or set them on fire and then freeze them and then melt them. So good. Love fucking Morden, chat. I am the very model of a scientist Salarian. Don't know the rest of the lyrics. I forgot. But I think Vanny uh, posted some bonus questions. Shit, we got some bonus questions, Vanny. Now, I did, I did not have time to give thick, robust, girthy answers to them. So this, I'm, just, I'm just going off the cuff. I'm going off the cuff, Jets. So let's see what we got here. And then I'll take some Q&A from you guys. Video game question. Shooters often give you some melee weapons. Bioshock gave us the wrench. Wolfenstein gave us a knife. And Half-Life gave us the infamous crowbar. What's your favorite melee weapon in a shooter. Ooh, well, you said so many good ones already. Oh, man, you're going to have to help me out here, chat. Now I got to think about it. Oh, you know what? The energy sword in Halo most recently. Really love that energy sword. That thing is fucking great. And that's, when, that's, been, that's been the franchise for over 20 years, chat. And I think, like, eventually when Halo 2, they introduced the grav hammer. I've been playing around with both of those, you know, playing Halo Infinite. That's been really fun. Crispy, thank you for the lurk. Appreciate that. Hey, drinks tonight? Ah, uh, just some spiced up uh, coffee I got right here. It's been pretty good. So I would definitely say Energy Sword and Grav Hammer from, from Halo. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Crowbar is iconic in Half-Life. And the Wrench and Bioshock, an iconic weapon. And I love the knife and wolf. And so I love that you can either throw them or stab them. And all the different executions I think is really cool. But I'm trying to think of, like, any other melee weapons, Chad. You got any answers? Oh, Chainsaw from Doom 2016. Great pick, Mysterious Ronin. Really good pick. Love that. Chainsaw and Vanny just put, yeah, you said Chainsaw and Doom right there, following you up. Nice. Nice. Um, any other, like, melee weapons and shooters, Chad? Because I know when we think of shooters, we think of, well, let's think of, the, you know, the, the guns, of course. But I'm trying to think of anything else. Hey, McCombie 47, Silent Assassin contracts. You could get a katana that could instantly, ooh, that's, I love that. Duke Nukem's uh, power kick. I remember um last one I played was uh, Duke Nukem Forever. I guess it was the power kick and that was the punch. Shadow Warrior 2 has some fun. So I have seen some stuff for Shadow Warrior 2. That looks really, really cool. I have to play. I've never played any of those games, but I want to someday. Nice. I didn't play shooters, but I love using the pipe in Silent Hill, says Edgy Berserker. Very cool. I'm trying to think of like in a horror game, like a melee weapon. Um I mean you have the knife in Resident Evil, but that's not uh, oh you know what? They have the this the, the in Resident Evil Village they have this new knife with like this Chris's knife, which looks like a brass knuckles, but it's like in the shape of a knife. That thing's pretty badass. Oh yeah, the black back for blood melee, that's true. In Back for Blood and also in Left for Dead uh two, the cricket, but you got the cricket bat in Left for Dead 2 chat, and you got the chainsaw, of course, the frying pan, the axe, the katana. There's definitely some fun stuff. And also the same thing for uh, Back for Blood. They got all those weapons, the baseball bat. That's, yeah, that's some good ones. Jimmy could just punch him. So, yeah, you could just punch him to death and rip him apart. The fists. The fists. We get, it counts. Doom Slayer's, uh, Doom Guy's fists. That's a good one. I like that in the PS4 game. It wasn't that the inhibitor chip failed like the movie and said it was the neural implants affecting his. That's right. It was just, he was causing brain damage. True in regards to uh, Ock. Ah, and the shave in the Far Cry says, yeah, yeah, Far Cry has some, uh, the, the melee kills, I love how you do that. Yeah, so there's definitely some good ones. But yeah, I guess most recently, Chad, the energy sword and the gravity hammer, because I, I guess they're, they're, they feel very different from each other. I like that about them. Yeah, where one is, you know, very, can be very fast, very quick, kind of like an insta-kill, or, you know, at least at least two hits. And the gravity hammer, that sends you fucking flying, and it also has uh, AOE damage around you, too, which I think is really neat. That's right, Village also has the lightsaber. Yeah. Oh yeah, the rising dual champ. Well, I guess that I guess that's kind of a shooter. It's more of a you know, you can uh I'm not, I guess that game is more focused on melee weapons though than guns. I mean there are guns in it. I feel like that maybe maybe that game is more melee focused. But you know, we'll count it. Why not? I've never unlocked the lightsaber because I think you gotta get like S rank on all of the um the mercenary missions. I was like, fuck that. I ain't doing that. I love Resident Evil Village, but I've never been a big mercenaries fan, which is basically horde mode, if you will. Um, but a lot of people loved it from like four and stuff. So to each their own. I've not played Days Gone. I got to play that someday. I heard it got better. I just, I didn't know interest in it. I was like, I don't know. The more I saw it, the more I was like, the more, the least interest, uh, I, at least interested I became. So I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Um, one day. I think it's playing. You know, it's on sale and I'm not going to make it into a franchise now. That's done. They canceled that. But some good suggestions there, Chad. Very good suggestions. Yeah. You can also buy the uh, oh the other oh, oh can I can I buy that oh wait 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 is it with in-game currency or do I have to use like actual money? I'm not gonna do that. 
Classic 1980s blood. You could stab me with a rake. I never played that game. Wow. Jesus. There you go, Chad. Oh, the chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess we can count the chainsaw bayonet in Gears of War. I mean, it's part of a gun, but yeah. I love that fucking thing. I love the Lancer. So goddamn good. Mm. And now, Chad, I think we got Vanny's last question, video game question. Fans of Half-Life have been asking for years now one simple question. When are we getting Half-Life 3? The game ended on a cliffhanger. Yep, and it's highly likely that we'll never get a conclusion to the story. We got Half-Life Alex, but it serves as a prequel to Half-Life 2. When folks asked the Valve if there was any plans, the answer has been something along the lines that we haven't even thought about it. Many have guessed that the reason they never made another installment and the stakes expectations are so high that nothing will meet expectations. Yeah, probably. Which, yeah, it's fair. Do you think Half-Life being an incomplete series adds to its overall legacy or a disappointment for fans? Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's... well. To briefly back up, I think one of the big reasons why they never made Half-Life 3 is because they made so much fucking money with, 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 with Steam. That was the big thing. Because people forget, didn't like Half-Life 2 launch with Steam? And back in the day, chat, Steam was such a fucking joke. People forget, like, oh, like now everyone loves Steam. Everyone has it, and they have so many buy, buy so There's so much money through that service. Uh, uh, and and Valve is 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 one of those just huge fucking publishers. Like they don't need to make another game because of Steam. Um, but I remember when Half Life Two launched with Steam, and it was a clusterfuck. It had so many issues, but over time it got better, and now it's beloved. And I think that was one of the reasons why they're like, we're making so much money. Like why bother? At like at all. And so, yeah, you had a couple of games they, 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 they published or developed, you know, like uh, the Portal series or, you know, they published left the first Left 4 Dead, but they developed the second one. Uh, and, yeah, most recently they did Half-Life Alex. Um, now, in terms of its overall legacy, do I think it, it's, that it adds to it? No, I don't. I think it takes away from it. I think that's, that will always be that, that shame. As like, that's a, that's a goddamn shame they never were able to complete that because they should have completed it. And it's, I think it's a disappointment for fans who really want that, who are really invested, who are really invested in that series and those characters and that lore. Uh, and it's like, well, and now it ends on that cliffhanger, and it, it's incomplete. Now, do I think there's going to be Half-Life 3? I do. I do. Actually, now more than ever, because Half-Life Alex, I think, was a test. I think that because that's what they want to do. They really want to move into VR, and I think if you're going to get a – and that game was very popular. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't play it. A lot of people didn't play it. But people who did play it said that's one of the best games of the year. It was on, like, a number of best of the games of the year lists. What the year came out, like, last year. Um, so I think now more than ever that that was a test case. They're like, okay, here's your prequel. Now we're going to do Half-Life 3. But now it's going to be only for VR, and you have to play it on our device. That's what I believe it's going to be. It was, it was, yeah, 2020 game of the year. So that's what they're going to do. It's gonna, they're going to do Half-Life 3, but it's going to be uh, a VR game. And it'll be uh, even more robust than Half-Life Alex. I think that's what's going to happen. So, it's coming. I think it's going to come within the 2020s, but it's going to be a VR game. And that's what VR needs to do. That's the only way that uh, VR is going to proliferate and evolve, is you need to make games like Half-Life Alex, which is a really robust, interesting, fun experience, which has a lot of variety. That's what, that's what they need to do. You know, I can live with that. There you go. I remember when PC gamers had their own version of a console or of Steam vs. Epic. Oh, is that really? Is that what they're doing? My God. That's crazy. That's, that's, uh, that's nuts. So, uh, yeah. So, I think, yes, we are going to, you know, is it disappointing that they never did it? Of course it is. I think that def that definitely has kind of fucked, you know, sullied the legacy of Half-Life. But now that Half-Life Alex was a critical and commercial success for them, they're going to do three now. But it's going to be a VR game. And it's going to pick up where the last game left off. I think that's what I... If I had to place money today, I was like putting money down. I was like, is Half-Life 3 happening? Yes, but it's going to be a VR game. That's the caveat. That is the caveat. You, know, have to, you have to play it on their system. Previous, thank you for the... Was it 10 biddies? A new Texas government app officially announced at the beginning of the the Texas border wall here in Rio Grande Valley. It's the first time in the history of the country the state has built its own border wall. That flies uh, top the crane. Oh, shit. Yeah. There you go, chat. Uh, what is the least expensive VR system? I think the PS, PS VR is the least expensive, I want to say. I believe it is. Yeah. Mad Boy News, like, have, like, th uh, three first VR game that has to be implanted in the base of your school. That'd be cool. I mean, people might fucking do that. Would not be shocked by that, chat. But, yeah. But that wraps up the questions for Class and Class. Not many this week. But thank you to Vanny, Vanny Spheres, for being a Juicy Gangster subscriber. Thank you for submitting those questions. And, chat, again, as you know, 
If you happen to be a revenue juicing subscriber on the Patreon, you have the ability to submit questions to my class in a glass cast for your ass with a little bit of sass. We'll all provide them. We'll provide you with thick, girthy, robust, well endowed answers, chat. And you get a lot of benefits too. All these video and audio commentaries from Krampus to Dracula 1931. Got the animes of Mobile Suit Gundam, the cartoons of Avatar, The Last Airbender. And more, 845-plus posts worth of content chat. Some good stuff. If you guys want to check out the Patreon, please go ahead and do so. But before we go ahead and move on to the Among Us portion of the stream, in honor of Naya Blownie, Blownie, Wowie, do you guys have any questions for me? For the, for the 20 minutes that is Naya Brownie's birthday that we have left, which I'm sure she's completely understanding of and not mad at me at all. <laughs> very good question. No, there were some very good questions this week. Very good questions from Manny. He always, he always has good questions. I love his theme questions. Give me my damn songs and I'm not understanding. Oh, yeah, I got to do the songs for Naya Brownie. That's true. I got to sing. Forgot about that. That is right. That is right. Yeah, well, you know, in the meantime, now you want to send me the songs? Send me the first song. How many songs do I owe? I can do I can do your songs, your birthday song. I can do your birthday song. That'll be fun. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And I'll answer any other questions you got, and I'll get myself a drink before we get the Among Us shenanigans chat. Which I have not played this in quite some time. You get on the Discord. You want to be on mic for tonight? You can jump on the Discord, chat. It's free tonight. You owe me three, but I'll sell for two for now. Okay, I'll do two songs. I'll do two songs for you, Naya Brownie Brownie. Wowie. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Be some good times. Uh, what old show are you watching on uh, Disney Plus? Uh, not oh, oh, like right now? Oh, uh, man, I don't have time. Um... What I was watching, it was mostly for reviews, though. It was, uh, it was Spider-Man, the animated series, and Gargoyles. Those are the ones I was watching consistently when I was doing reviews. I would definitely go back to those. I got to finish them up. I got to do all those episodes for reviews. But definitely Spider-Man, the animated series, the 90s one, Radioactive, Spider-Blood, and Gargoyles. That was big. That was pretty big. Because you know about the new roles in Among Us? Nope. <laughs> We're going to find out together. I had to miss the song, but I think I'm going to have to go to bed. Have a fun night. No problem, Steph. Don't understand. I know it's late. I know it's 11.43 p.m. Get your sleep. It might be even later for you, wherever you are in the world. No problem at all. No about a hard hand, Steph. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah, you want to send those my way, Naya Brownie? I can sing to you. I can serenade you. I can do all that stuff. An hour later, oh, so yeah, it's super late for you, so it's almost 1 a.m. So, yeah, no problem at all. Nine Marine Jesus lyrics, Rio de Young Og, what do Rio mean lyrics? Okay. All right, chat. Uh, what do Rio mean? I'm going to go ahead and listen to this briefly, and then I'll come back and do my cover song, chat. Give me a, give me a moment. Okay, I got a question. I'm watching the music video version. Does he have, like, like really bad acne? Or does he have something, like, embedded in his cheeks? He's got, like, these giant fucking pimples. This, this, uh, this, uh, this man. This Rio Da Young OG. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just, I just noticed, I just noticed that. I was like, he's got some weird shit in his face. I don't know if it's some piercings, chat, but here we go. I am singing What Do Rio Mean by Rio Da Young OG. What up, Wayne? You know, you know, you know. That's degrees, vampire. Yeah, where my cup at? Where's my black at? I heard the ops find a slide. Where's my strap at? Who got some real drink? Where the act at? You want what? You want 8000 for a pint? I'm going to find a grab that. Don't pull up with a 36 on and get laughed at. The rap game was paying me good. I'm bringing crack back. Matter of fact, you vampire's ass. I'm bringing rap back. 
Yeah, I'm in my black bag. I'm in my trash bag. You got, I got my boys in every hashtag. Good dope. My friend hit it, did the cabbage patch. I've been stretching work out like Laffy Taffy. My mama did everything. I ain't have a daddy. I start yelling and boob to wake water up. He ain't have an Andy. You be hitting hoes on the period. You nasty, nasty. I just pulled a three or walk, man. That shit delicious. I know I keep talking about the drink, but you don't get it. I'm a fucking dope head, bro. I'm so addicted, and I never put it uh, down. I'm so committed. Yo, I fucked her if you ask. I'm open with it. Fast talking. I don't like lotion slicker. I got a huge heart. I don't think the ocean bigger. Too many people in the club. I know COVID in it. Take a vampire. Gun off his hip. Then smoke him with it. So many blues on me. I'm a rolling 60. My little brother in a wheelchair, but still rolling with me. Told my son he can't hit this juice. I put my potion in it. Ugh. Hitting your bitch with a lot of motion. I be stroking different. Spreading the hose legs wide open. I be poking kidneys. In the eye drop, 100 spots. I hope he hit me. I ain't let the police search my car. Dope was in it. Seventy thousand dollar kit last year was broke. This made I made I made this year I made two hundred k legit. Last year was dope. I ain't have shit. Vampire. We was even lacking hope. Put a hundred k on the table. I whacked the Pope. Trying to sign a deal with QC. Let me ask little boat. Just give. <laughs> Just gave my little bitch 10k, she ain't have to want it. Wait up a quarter on the scale and crack me on it. I ain't get my gun in here tonight, I'm gonna have to poke you. If you ain't never taste the act, you don't need to drink. Just cut the beat on, let me rap, I don't need to think. Just hit another project, bitch, raw, now my wee wee stank. I just drunk a lot of act. I think my pee pee pink. My PO called me the other day, what do Kiki mean? I said my auntie. <laughs> Two T's, what's TT mean? Hit him up the top that real close. I didn't need a beam. That's d distro kid, pay me every month. I don't need a fiend. Bitch, I got a pint of wok. You can't keep your green. When I ain't got no codeine in me, I'm a Debo mean. When I ate, I made sure my vampires ate. You ain't feed your team. Them 18's, not 22's, but I keep them clean. Vampires, ghetto boy shit, vampires. <laughs> End scene. <laughs> I did <laughs> There you go. There you go, chap. Rio De Jong's story, he was a dumb kid trying to cook french fries on his own. The frying pan caught on fire. He tried to put it out, and we knew what happens when hot grease is. Oh, that's why his cheeks all fucked up. Damn. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I thought he had, like, really bad pimples or something. Rhythm is Phil Collins in uh, his house. I nailed it. Hell ye. So, Chad, for every 500 bitties, I will do a song of your choice. 500 bits. I'll do a song. Cover a song. What song was that? That was, um, What Do Rio Mean by Rio Da Young OG. Vampires. And now I'll do Naya's second song. What is your second song, Naya? You wish me to do on the streams. I hope you enjoyed the song, though, Chad. I hope you liked it. <laughs> I hope you found it very entertaining. Oh, I must have spilled my drink. I got scared. I was on the computer. Oh, Lordy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, here's the next one. Tear the club up, thug slob on my knob. <laughs> Chris, I'm listening to this briefly to get her. Also, Chris does the same rap he always does. You don't know that. It, you might sound completely like that. Good to see you, my sweet baby broccoli eating boy. Good to see you, Joshua. Happy to have you here. Dance is well making intense eye contact. <laughs> yes, as he does. Mm. <laughs> Slater, good to see you. I'm doing, I'm doing the hippity hops. I'm doing the rappings, if you will. So let me go ahead and listen to this song briefly, chat. And then I'll, and then I'll come back and do my versions. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, this is um, this is slob on my knob by Tear the Club Up Thugs. Chat. <clears throat> Here we go. 
Slop a monobla corn on the cob. Check in with me and do your job. Lay on the bed and give me head. Don't have to ask. Don't have to beg. Juicy is my name. Sex is my game. Let's call the boys. Let's run a train. Squeeze in my nuts. Lick on my butt. The natural curling hair. Please don't touch. First find a mate. Second find a place. Third find a bag. To hide that whole face. Real name Rover. I said bend over. I saw to knock, the then came the Dota. Smell like mush, should have had a whoosh. Told her to stop and take a douche. Why she do that? I don't want the cat, so bounce out and never came back. <laughs> Suck a vampire dick or something. <laughs> Suck a vampire dick. Suck a vampire dick. Suck a vampire dick or something. My vampire D Magic said he had to have it. I said, just forget it. It's too crabby. Now a little freak in Hollywood sucks on a dick, does it real good. She'll give you money. Fill up your tummy. House full of kids. Parents all scummy. What had it down? Backyard ground. Hit it from the back. Enjoy the sound. Lay on the cover always use the rubber till i got caught fucking with her mother she blamed it on me we fought in the street she pulled out a knife so i had to flee called up the boys went to her house charged the whole place through that bitch out police busted in where the vampires at we, we left just in time and never came back rolled through the hood waving at the freaks who sniffing all the rocks and smoking all the geeks made another stop police station saw a few cops Drove by and sprayed them. Lots tank number. A vampire said he saw bogus all the time. Never get caught. <laughs> Slava Manav. Tear the club up, thugs. And there you go. <laughs> and there you go, chat. That's the that's the song. I love that I was a lyric. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I hope you I hope you like that. These mafia people only Oscar winning rap group. This is how you get that. Guess that this is what this is them? Life's hard for a pimp. This is them. Wow. Wow. There you go, chat. That was a that was a good one. That was a fun one. That might be one of my favorite. Cold on the cob. That might be one of my favorite ones I've ever done. Know who to kill first in Among Us. And it looks good. What I do? I, I was told to do this. It's Naya Brownie's birthday songs. I want more songs. <laughs> you want me to do one more? What's your third one, Naya? What's your third one? Yes, or if someone wants to gift a song to Naya, you can do that. Five hundred bitties. I'll gift. You can gift the song to her, and then she can choose. Hell yeah! Have a good evening. Sure, you have now. Sure, you have a fantastic evening. Thank you for stopping by the stream. An absolute pleasure. An absolute pleasure. Have a good evening. But yeah, you want me? I'll, I'll. You want one more song? Now you can send me one more song. I'll do it. That one was a good one. I don't know how you're gonna beat that one though. I don't know how you're gonna beat that. Oh, uh, Darkstar, you owe me one of my birthday, October 19th. And I just, oh shit! Okay, we can do that. Flashes back to "Kiss from a Rose." <laughs> Remember that one? I did not do a good job. I did not do a good job with that song. I butchered that song. Did my own version. I think I did a rap version of "Kiss, Kiss, Kiss from a Rose." Oh lordy. Yes, indeed. You owe me a B-Day song. I owe people too, Loki, but I haven't sent it. God damn it. I'll do these. I'll do these. <laughs> Someday. Who's to send Total Eclipse of the Heart now? No. Oh, Cupcake. Oh, I know Cupcake. I've done many her songs, chat. I'll do Cupcake songs. <laughs> All right. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this song is nasty. I don't like it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> this is... um. Juicy Coochie by Cupcake, chat. All right, here we go. <laughs> Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Circle my tongue all around your tip. I said shove down the dick so my nostrils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Circle my tongue all around your tip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. He was like, ooh-wee, 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 ooh-wee. Felt my juicy coochie. Juicy coochie, juicy coochie, juicy coochie. Felt my juicy. Juicy coochie, juicy coochie, juicy coochie, juicy coochie. 
<laughs> on the table, I'm giving a head while we're eating cornflakes. Because my job ain't done. If that vampire still awake, vampire mo moan so much, I fuck him with duct tape. I'm 18, but I got a tight pussy like I'm 8. Mm. Could you stay whack so I ain't never got a coma? Fucking that time, I'm fucking you into a coma. Give you the best sex, swallow your dick. Hope it stick out the front of my neck. <laughs> pound, pound, I like to get cracked real hun. So excuse me, sir, my pussy fart. <laughs> to make my thighs shake like jello, I need a dick longer than an egg roll. Show you a different 69 that no one knows. Like I'm sucking your toes while you eating my butthole. He done busting, but I'm sucking till he pee. I suck dick like granny like I don't got no teeth. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Suck on my tongue around your tip. I said shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. Circle my tunnel around your tip. Shove down the dick so my tonsils rip. He was like, ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh wee. And felt my juicy coochie. Juicy coochie, juicy coochie, juicy coochie, ooh wee. And felt my juicy coochie. Juicy coochie, juicy coochie, juicy coochie. Nobody call my phone after 9 o'clock. Because I'll be given top-notch top, hop on the dick like a hopscotch. I don't get inside because the box hot. You know the pussy good when he kicking off his socks. Ain't got time to stall. Let me massage your balls. Pussy made him scream because it ain't got thin walls. Pull his dick out the hole of a bagel. <laughs> then he said suck. Then get anal while I'm watching cable. Then move and groove slow while I'm new. Gotta put a bib on when he put the dick between the pool. Because I drip so much slop on the cock, you know. Give you what you want like we at the Oprah show. Vampires <laughs> chase the taste, but I don't ever run. Make that cock disappear. That's kidnapped. <laughs> Your dick is my bullets. Let me get you strum. Wrap my lips around that thing like a hot dog bun. I'm a hoochie with the coochie. Hoochie with the coochie. Hoochie with the coochie. Hoochie with the coochie. Dick fatter than Peter Griffin and the head bigger than Stewie. <laughs> There you go. You're welcome. Happy birthday, Naya. Happy bur happy birthday, dear Naya. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh lord. Does Corey or Mario ever watch these streams and think we like? I think maybe they've seen me do a couple of songs before. That was that was something. That did juicy Gucci. <laughs> Oh, well, Chad, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, 500 biddies, or if it's your birthday, I will do a song for you, Chad. That's how it works. That's how, that's how, that's, that song, it's tiring. It, it took a lot out of me. Oh, Lord. She's dying. They were atoning for this, for his, this is our punishment. Yeah, but there is no God. <laughs> Don't say Chris never has done anything for us. I've done so much. I've done so much, especially your tonsils. Oh, God. Rip your tonsils out. Please, no more songs. That's fair. But you know what we can do now, Chad? We can play some Among Us. That's what we can do right now. We can get into some Among Us. So those of you who want to jump in the Discord, go ahead and do so, Chad. You can go into the uh, the the Among Us um, um, chat. Go ahead and jump in the Among Us chat, chat, right away. Let me make a drink first. Okay, I'm going to make a drink too now. That's fine. So, as much as crossplay, I think it might be. I think you can play it on phone. I think I'll give, I'll have the code. I'll have the code ready for you. So, let me go ahead and get Among Us up right now. Chad, I'll get that set up. <clears throat> and you guys can hop in the Discord and I'll join you in just a second. <clears throat> 